Hey, this is Miss Park. I'm here to read to you a trickster tale. A trickster tale has a character that tricks another character, somebody who gets tricked. So try to figure out who they are, what the trick was, and what the character's motivation was for tricking that person. That means why did they want to trick that person? Brother Rabbit, a Cambodian tale by Min Fong Ho and Sepan Ross, illustrated by Jennifer Hewitson. Brother Rabbit was hopping along early one morning when he noticed a patch of tender rice seedlings just planted in the field across the river. Now rabbits love to eat rice seedlings and Brother Rabbit was no exception. He decided to cross the river and sneak into the field for a feast. But how could he cross the river? As he stood on the riverbank pondering this, a crocodile swam along. What luck, Brother Rabbit thought. I bet I can get this crocodile to give me a ride across. So he called out, Oh, what a strong and beautiful creature you are. Could you please swim a little closer so I can get a better look at you? Flattered, the crocodile swam over to the rabbit and crawled up the muddy bank. But your skin, Brother Rabbit exclaimed then, pretending to be shocked. Why is it so rough and ugly? I think it's a disease called ringworm, the crocodile answered. I can get rid of it for you, said Brother Rabbit, if you just ferry me across the river. Happy to hear this good news, the crocodile smiled toothily at Brother Rabbit. Get on, he said. If you can cure me of my rough skin, I'll be glad to give you a ride. So the rabbit got on, but not before he had carefully put a lotus leaf on top of the crocodile, crocodile's head so he wouldn't have to sit on the scaly skin. Why are you putting a leaf on my head? The crocodile asked. Because I respect you too much to touch you on the head, the rabbit lied. Satisfied, the crocodile swam across the river with the rabbit sitting on his head. When they reached the other bank, the brother rabbit jumped off and started to run away. Wait, the crocodile shouted. What about my rough skin? Idiot, said the rabbit. You got them from your parents and grandparents. There's nothing I can do about it. And laughing, he hopped off to the field of seedlings. Just you wait, the croc crocodile thought angrily as he watched Brother Rabbit disappear. I'll teach you to make fun of me. The next time I see you, I'll pretend to be a log and I'll bite you in half when you step on me. After Brother Rabbit had eaten his fill of, the, of seedlings, he hopped along the fields. In the distance, he saw a woman on her way to, mar to market. On her head was a basket of bananas. How sweet and ripe those bananas looked. Brother Rabbit was determined to get some for himself, and so he crept up the road and lay there, very still. When the woman came along, she thought the rabbit was dead. What a lucky day, she exclaimed. I, have, I can have rabbit curry for dinner. And so saying, she picked up the limp rabbit and tossed him into her basket. Of course, as soon as he was inside the basket, Brother Rabbit began to eat the bananas. By the time the woman arrived at the market, he had finished every one. When she lowered the basket from her head, he jumped out and ran away, leaving only a pile of banana peels behind him. It was high noon when Brother Rabbit returned to the river. He stood on the riverbank wondering how he was going to get back home. Just then, something long and brown floated by him. Now I wonder, said Brother Rabbit, is that a log or a crocodile floating by? He raised his voice. If it is a log, it should float upstream. But if it is a crocodile, it should float downstream. The crocodile, for that was indeed who it was, heard the rabbit. Well, he thought, since I'm pretending to be a log, I had better do what he says and float upstream. So, very carefully, paddling his feet underwater, he started to swim upstream. When Brother Rabbit saw the log floating against the current, he burst out laughing. So it is you, after all, Mr. Crocodile, he shouted. You can't fool me. The crocodile was furious. He thrashed around trying to bite Brother Rabbit, but the rabbit just skipped gaily back to the safety of the rice fields. Next time, the crocodile vowed silently, I'll pretend to be dead, and when he gets close enough, I'll gulp him right down. After hopping along in the hot sun for a while, Brother Rabbit felt tired. So he sat down on a tree stump next to the pond. But as he rested, the sun melted the resin on the stump, gluing his tail onto the wood. When, oops. 
When Brother Rabbit tried to jump off, he was stuck fast to the stump. Just then a baby elephant came to drink from the pool. Hey, stop that, Brother Rabbit shouted. You can't drink my water. Startled, the baby elephant ran to tell his mother. Soon the mother elephant came lumbering down to the pond. Why can't my son drink that pond water, she demanded. Because the gods have ordered me to guard it against big stupid animals like the two of you, Brother Rabbit retorted. Furious, the mother elephant twisted her trunk around the rabbit's neck, ripping him free from the sticky tree stump and flung him away. Thanks for setting me free, the rabbit yelled cheerfully as he ran off. It was already twilight and Brother Rabbit was eager to get back to his home across the river. So back to the riverbank he went and there he came across the crocodile again. This time, of course, he was playing dead. His huge jaws were stretched open, wide and stiff. Brother Rabbit approached the crocodile cautiously and looked into the gaping jaws. Oh, what smooth, sharp fangs, he said. The crocodile didn't stir. So Brother Rabbit took a step closer and touched the crocodile's teeth. I'll pry out the big fangs to make a new handle for my pocket knife, he said. And I'll use the small fangs to make a new handle for my wife's kitchen knife. 